Hi, my name is Bree Helton. I'm on here on stage one of Diane Initiative 2021 virtual. Um, first off, I just want to take an opportunity to thank our sponsors today. Uh, we have eLearn Security, Axionis, MongoDB, Juniper Networks, Corelight, Google, uh, We Hack Purple, and Bridge Crew, um, all sponsoring the tracks today for this event and such. I uh, just want to give them a shout out. Please visit their expo booths if they have any set up over on the left hand tab if you're watching this today. Or if you're watching a video of this, please take the opportunity to um, thank our sponsors and go visit their websites for the various services that they offer. Um, also, before we get off into our talk today, I wanted to basically do a few call outs for a few other activities. If you look on the left hand side of your menu, you'll see that we have an expo hall and other sessions going on today. Um, take the opportunity to visit any of our vendors, vendors in the expo hall. And we also have another of, uh, number of other side chats going on today between the Mental Health Village and the Teen Hacker Village and CTF going on within the various sessions. <laughs> so if you wander out from the tracks, feel free to go check out the other uh, areas of the con going on and such. Uh, but it's my pleasure today to introduce uh, Kirsten Renner. Um, she will be giving a talk, and as an introduction, uh, she's possibly best known as the co-organizer of the Car Hacking, Car Hacking Village and a serial volunteer across the community. And I know I've seen you before at other InfoSec events and such. Um, after a brief spell uh, programming and running help desk, she settled into recruiting and has a passion for finding the best matches and specializes in the hacking community. And with that, I will hand off uh, it to her for her talk. Thank you so much for everything, Bree. You've been amazing supporting me. Um, all the volunteers are fantastic. Thank you, Diana Initiative, and uh, all the talks have been fantastic. So I, I, I hope I can add some value here <clears throat> as well. Um, welcome to my talk, turning job uh, job ads, particularly those of the bad nature, uh, into actual opportunities for yourself. <clears throat> so it's true. Um, I hope that you all saw the keynote yesterday uh, was amazing. And one of her slides, one of Alyssa's slides said that job ads suck. Just so happened that was on my title here. Um, she's right. And we're going to talk about what to do, <clears throat> excuse me, about it. Um, speaking of keynotes, keynote today also was amazing. And she mentioned that you are your own best asset. Uh, I'll be um, saying almost the same thing. I call it your own best advocate. And, um, and that will come up here in a sec. <clears throat> so who am I? Um, Bree mentioned uh, what I what I do in the community. I also for for a paycheck am the director of recruiting at a company called Nevada, an advanced analytics and full spectrum uh, cyber products and services firm. <clears throat> I'm a college dropout that comes that comes into the story later. If it becomes relevant to what we're going to talk about today. Um, and I also mentioned here that I did a little bit of programming and a little bit of IT and that now and for the last well over a decade have been recruiting. So again, that becomes relevant again also in our discussion, specifically with regard to um, <clears throat> qualifications and who we are and where we are in our, in our uh, journeys and uh, how that relates to job ads. <clears throat> So these are a sample of some of my prior speaking engagement as well. And you can find me on Twitter as uh, Krenner, which a lot of people just think that's my name and refer to me as that. So <laughs> if you can't pronounce, Kir pronounce Kirsten, just call me Krenner and I'll reply. So now what? <clears throat> um, so all of our perspectives are different and we're all in different stages of our careers. Um, our backgrounds brought us to where we are and who we are and we're all in different spots. Uh, I, I actually have recorded this talk now twice um, for two other conferences and I'm recording it again Monday. But this is my first opportunity to, to give the talk um, live and so <clears throat> Um, I'm really looking forward to engaging and I'm really looking forward to this is this is close to on a stage I've been uh, in the last 18 months um, and I'm going to go off script for a brief moment here and it's because last night I was thinking I was thinking about um, why this message is important for anybody who faces challenges based on um, what, whatever it may be, whatever your perspective is, whatever your, um, wherever you're coming from. And I thought about 
I wonder how I got to this place personally. Um, so we don't all know what each other's exact <clears throat> circumstances are or perspectives are, right? Um, um, I've never been uh, trans. I've never been a person of color. I've never been a person with a visible uh, disability, <clears throat> for example. So uh, we're all coming from a different place. Where do I come from? Um, I'm a woman. I've been a single mom. I know what it's like to be raised by someone with mental illness. I know what it's like to be in an abusive marriage. I know what it's like to wake up from a coma and have to learn to walk and talk again. And then to <clears throat> look in the mirror one day uh, after fighting to get back custody of my kid. This all is going to make sense here in a second. Um, and, and say to myself, I don't have education. I have no formal education. I didn't go to college. I have no experience. Um, I have no formal training. So at that point, every job description is not a fit for me. So how did I get to all those places I told you about on the last slide? Um, something clicked. There was a switch. I clicked the switch. Uh, and I'm going to hopefully say something today to inspire anybody to do just that. <clears throat> so as we go from these different places, these different challenges, I, I mentioned that I was briefly uh, in programming. How did I do that? I was at a temporary part-time front desk job. It was GovSec contract software development. This is back in the 90s. They called it programming. And I just started reading a book. For those of you don't, that don't know, it's uh, the younger crowd. It's a paper thing. There's pages. You read it. Taught myself how to program. So yes, middle-aged, white, dude, VP guy who just recently said, do you actually know how to program? Yeah, I do. I do because I read it in a book, right? And so what is my point? Not cooler. I'm not smarter. I'm not stronger. I just flipped a switch. You all have that switch too. So half of you reported that you don't know how to find a job. That is what I believe DT put on the career hacking uh, village page for DEF CON. That's, that's interesting. I uh, will get to a survey here um, in a minute where you all, half of you told me, if you see a job ad that sucks, which again, there's most of them, like Alyssa said, right? Um, you just walk away from it. You just chose to not take those opportunities. So we'll get to that in a second here too. And again, statistically, I don't have all the statistics, but I do know that women and people of color are statistically less likely to apply for a job that they don't feel like they're a match for. So let's talk about what to do about that. Do I think, in all my years of experience, I'm pretty old, do I think that we can make the employers get it right? All of them. No, we'll keep trying, but they won't. So better to arm and enable ourselves. Like I said in the last keynote, she said that you're your best asset. You're also your best advocate. So let's figure out how to turn all those crappy job descriptions <clears throat> and job ads into opportunities for ourselves. So here's the agenda. That's, that's me. Um, look at it sort of like an engineering challenge. Right. So when you go to your stakeholders and when you go to your customers and you talk to them about their problems or what they're asking you to provide a solution for, what do you do? You start building the requirements. Right. You start ranking them. You start defining them. You start looking around at, at uh, sorting them. What's important? You're going to run into challenges and blockers and you can provide solutions to those as well. This is just like that. Then you will find the avenues to co connecting, which is is the solution and uh and then you get to the next level and, and do effective interviewing so you start the job ad even the bad one and you go from there so we figured out okay at least we can assume uh that the job ad is indicative of what they're probably hiring so what are you going to do with that here's your first assignment and this won't take a long time and this isn't hard Okay, ABC company is hiring, probably, because they posted this job. I want you to start on LinkedIn. I want you to look at the company page. Now, I'm not 
super concerned about what they say about themselves there because they say whatever they want you to think. So let's let's do something else. Let's look at what else they're advertising. That's going to tell you either what type of work they do or what type of work they want to do or are trying to do or are trying to win work to do. <clears throat> so that's that's telling you one thing about the company. Then I want you to look at the people. So LinkedIn will tell you when you put ABC company in your search, you can say what it'll ask you. What do you want to look for? The jobs or the people? I want you to look at the people, particularly the ones that are either doing the job that you saw. Let's just make up a job. Intel analyst. <clears throat> that's what you want to do. But that's the job post that you saw. Look for the other Intel analysts at ABC Company. Let's take a look real quick at what their progression within their careers looks like. What education did they have? How did they get there? Are there any Intel analysts without degrees? Because let's pretend you're me and you don't have one. Cool. Well, it looks like at this company, I can get there without that, right? That's what you just figured out. Did they move up within the company or did they have to move between companies to get where they are today? So look for who's doing what you want to do and let's try to figure out how they got there and whether or not the company that they're in that's advertising is a good place for you to get there. So I sort of redacted. You can actually you can actually see you, you can see it. But um, if I didn't ask for permission, I, I <clears throat> redacted and um, Alyssa gave me permission plus who doesn't want to see her beautiful face. So um, here's a couple different things you're talking about. And I did all this in one day, by the way. This is a daily thing. I don't know if it's just an algorithm for my feed, but I see people complaining every day about job descriptions. Some that are completely nonsensical, some that are very unreasonable, and the rare gems. This might be the only time I ever saw somebody say that one was good, but but that's nice of, of her to do that. Um, <clears throat> so also, I get what's happening here. I get that people are saying, hey, if you use a term in your job ad like fast pace, it really means you want me to do three jobs. So just ask yourself if that's what you want to do, right? That sort of thing is interesting to me. Um, I don't want to just get pigeonholed or I'm at a place where or I've kind of always been in a place where I'm going to get bored easily if I'm not doing a bunch of things. So if I'm not having a lot of things on my to do list, um, I'm going to go create new ones. So this is still going to be giving you the information that you're looking for that you need. Um, self-starter, maybe they weren't trying to trick you into saying, by the way, we're never going to train you. We're never going to give you any resources. We will be fair for a millisecond uh, to say that not every company has the same resources or in some cases uh, timing. And by timing, I mean, if the need is immediate, if the customer has not customer has an immediate need, they may not have the time that it takes to do an IRAD or a training program or an internship program or a fellowship program. But bravo to the companies that do that. So be looking for those things as well. Take note of that. Those are the types of companies that invest in their people. <clears throat> so again, I asked you all, there wasn't, now I can't remember the amount of people it takes for a survey to actually become data. This is nowhere near that amount of people. I don't have that many followers, but um, again, half of you are saying, I skip it, I ignore it if it's horrible. <clears throat> so I have a mini disclaimer. Well. Too many disclaimers. I hear you because I've heard you before and because I can read your minds, actually. Um, I hear you saying, yeah, they sometimes they write job descriptions just for the, just for one person. They have one person that they want or they have a tiny group of people that they want. Um, I have two little examples. Is it true? Yes, it's true. Have I ever done it? Yes. At my current job? No. Um, actually, the one time I did it was 12 years ago, maybe. Um, if I told you the tool, you'd know who the people were. Uh, what I'll do is I'll say, and I'm not going to tell you because I've been hiring in them, but some of them. <clears throat> what I will tell you is that the customer had a specific problem that only a specific tool could solve. 
fair. Okay. So they wanted, they took it a step further, the people that wrote the tool. Okay. That's a small handful of people. So what can we do about that? And the way that I, when I was recording the DEF CON Career Village Talk, um, Kathleen, we all know her, we all love her. She was the moderator, she was recording it with me. So I saw her face and it occurred to me uh, that she was the perfect example. And here's why. What if I am the company owner and I want a Kathleen? I specifically want someone who has done what she has done that we can all, it's, it's pretty fair to say that she's almost the only one, if not the only one that has done certain things in our community. So if the job description says you planned this and you started this and you founded this and you were the champion of this and okay, well, only she can do that. Only she has done that, but can only she do that? Not necessarily, right? Uh, can someone else learn to do it? Can someone else give examples of things that they've done that are similar. Well, I, well, I didn't start mock interview villages and I didn't get conferences to adopt that and start doing that, but I started a training program in a school or you get what I'm trying to say, right? So this, and when you identify these things in the job description, I'm about to tell you how you can get through the layers, the layers being the recruiter and the interview table. And this is where you are gonna already have forward thought all of these questions, the things that don't make sense in the description and the things that don't necessarily line up with exactly what you've done. Because again, if I only got the jobs that didn't require degrees, I wouldn't have a job or right? y'all never would have met me. <clears throat> So there, I'm only going to give these things. I actually regret these slides when I when I record this next time. I won't do it. Um, there are some things that you should just run away from. I won't give them a lot of attention. I won't leave them up there forever. I know this is being recorded, but if they're disgusting, and let me tell you, have you been on social media lately? There's been a lot of remarkably weird, gross things lately. I don't know if people are trying to be clever, if they've been in their house too long and they're bored. I don't know what's wrong with people, but your clever little surveys and your weird things that you're saying, it's not funny. It's not funny. Look at number eight. That's that's gross. If you see things like this, run away. You can call them out for it if you want, or you could just, these are the ones I want you to run away from. <clears throat> so back to your requirements. Remember that when you're looking at a job description, it's supposed to be, it's legally, from a compliance perspective, supposed to be broken down into requirements, that which is required, that which is preferred. So I want you to do the same thing when you're looking at your jobs. I want you to look at the company. Remember, you figured out a little bit about the company. You figured out about the culture. You figured out about what the typical path for other employees there seems to be like. Does that work for me, for the things that I need, for the things that I want, for the things that I prefer? Do I have deal breakers? Are there certain things that certain companies do that you're not interested in being a part of? Figure that out, make a list. I'm a list person. Make a list, rank, and proceed. So I won't go through all of this. I actually know who wrote this. I know what they were trying to accomplish. <clears throat> This is either an exploit dev or an RE or some combination of that. Um, again, I get what they were trying to do. So I'm going to go through as let's pretend this is you. You just saw this. You're interested, but you have questions. What questions do you have? Let's see. First of all, what kind of poly? I'll tell you this. They're not supposed to say, OK, they're just not. There's reasons. We'll get to that later. Um, but you should note that question. Note that to yourself. Be ready to talk to the recruiter about it and to talk to the interviewer about it because you need to know. We already talked about, okay, degree, but really, does my experience count? Um, I won't talk about this a ton, but they, they list all these forensics tools, um, but is something comparable going to be okay or not? I could talk about this one all day long. I'm so frustrated that they listed all those languages and they should have at least split it into two different groups, right? So you should have your, your C++ and your Java over here and then you should have all your scripting languages over there because 
frankly, it's not exactly the same thing. So that's frustrating. So if you skip down to the bottom, when you see words like strong and good, they are subjective. They should not be under quals. In fact, I think that they switched it. I think they should put their preferred, I don't know, there should be a lot less things that are qualified basic quals and then a, a, a much longer list of things that are preferred so shame on whoever did this again it's a lot to unpack it's reasonable and it makes sense for you to question these things and be ready to talk to your recruiter about them and then to the hiring managers as well so again you don't have a degree uh, or certain certs ask the question i'm the perfect example figure out this is a really good opportunity for you to ask okay cool can you provide opportunities for me? Do you provide opportunities for people? Do you have a budget for reimbursing people for their educational expenses? Do you have growth plans for people? This is the opportunity for you to figure out really more about the company based on what they're asking you to come up with. Certs, oh my God, well, CISSP is really hard and SANS is really expensive. So is there a budget for this as well? Now, when we talk about recruiters, <clears throat> I, I will resist talking about them for too long other than to say good companies should have good recruiters. Do they sometimes make mistakes? Yes, they're people just like you. Have I ever made a mistake? Yes. Have I ever dropped the ball or not gotten back to somebody? Sure. But I've never treated anybody like crap. And I've never not given them the time that they deserve I've never not answered their questions and nobody that has ever worked for me, for me should have ever treated you like crap. So be noticing how the recruiters are behaving. And if they don't work for the company, that's a completely different story, right? That's not indicative of what's going to happen within the company. So an agency recruiter is a whole different story for a whole different day. But if they work for the company, they should be taking the time. Remember, you're your own best advocate. Remember that. But they they represent you that you should think of them as like your agent. They should be doing what's best for you. They shouldn't be calling you, telling you just about a job. They should be calling you, finding out about you and saying, you know what? I called you for this, but it seems like after I've talked to you about the things that you want, need and are interested in, you might be a way better fit for that. Ever had a recruiter from ABC company? tell you you'd probably be happier at XYZ, don't forget their name. They're pretty cool. So your good recruiter gets you to the interview table. And now, remember, you're your own best advocate. You're going to address the things that you saw that didn't make sense or that you at least want clarification on with regard to the job description. You are going to take this opportunity to address even before you get asked to address the things that between your resume and the job description don't match right you're going to say well i know you're looking over here for this but here's this other thing that i did or that i have done or that i'd like to do so take that opportunity to address those things as well yes COVID. i will say this i will say besides beauty filters <laughs> um I will say a good thing is either fully online events that are occurring or hybrid events that are occurring are giving more opportunities for people that previously missed out on the networking within events. So that's great. Mock interviews, they're happening here, are very, very useful. This is an opportunity if you're doing one today, and, and hopefully you are, um, if you're doing a resume workshop, while you're interacting with those people, with those hiring managers and recruiters, switch it up and interview them as well. This is a really good learning experience for you. So the bottom line is every job post is a place for you to start exploring. Now you know that they're hiring, figure out what that company seems to stand for and Figure out a little bit about the journeys that are happening for the people currently working there. Determine if those things match up with you and your current needs and requirements. 
and be prepared to address all the things that you identified that don't look like the match that we talked about. If you are willing and able to learn, you're qualified for every single job. I promise. If your concerns are valid, we're going to address them. You're going to address them. Your unique journey got you here and made you who you are. You're just like mine did. It's not a contest. No one is better or stronger or smarter than you. I don't run ultra marathons because I'm in the best shape. I do it because I flip the switch. So wherever your finish line is, whether it's to be the CEO, to double the size of your company, to get your CISSP, whatever it is, you set the mark and flip the switch. I hope this motivated you. I quoted the one and only warrior princess here. She's amazing. If you haven't had the pleasure, I, I got to see her speak very recently. She's amazing. Look her up. And does anybody have any questions? Hey, I believe we're actually at time at this point. I don't uh, see any questions currently in chat. Um, I was going to say, if we want to hop off so, so the next speakers can prepare, if you want to be able to grab the next question in chat, or if you think you can answer that real quickly, that just came up. Uh, so my only reader for me. Um, I'll, I'll take it offline. Yeah, but thank you very much for your uh, talk, uh, Kirsten. That was super helpful. Consideration someone who's been looking at jobs for a while now. It's always good to get a second opinion and just know that you know my concerns are valid and I can bring them straight to the company that I'm interviewing with just to get a good answer. Um, that way I can kind of figure out early on in the interview process, is a good fit or should I just move on to the next thing? Thanks everybody. Yeah, thank you very much for your talk. Thanks.